record. Okay. So this session is the money is in your existing customers. And if there are questions along the way, um, feel free to drop them in the chat. I've asked Katie to kind of take a look um, as we're going. I'd rather talk about it while we're going uh, than to have it all at the end. I want to have it be a discussion. So please interrupt and ask questions. So I was very excited when uh, Katie asked me to come and be a part of this and help out today. Because um, like she said, we're a founding member of ThriveCo. We love ThriveCo and we miss being there all the time. Usually there's a ton of Atomic Revenue team members uh, hanging out in the office a couple times a week and we're looking forward to getting back to that. So today is about the money is in your existing customers. One of the things that we're hearing a lot right now from companies, from the solopreneurs to those managing, you know, a 500 person team is that it's hard <laughs> right now. It's hard for everybody. Um, and they're trying to find the quick wins. How do I generate brand new leads? You know, how do I close more sales? How do I keep this going while we get into Maybe not the new normal, but the next normal. Um, what's going to be the next way that we do things? So the reason why, you know, Katie asked me to be a part, you know, like I said, co-founding uh, member of Atomic Revenue, but I am one of the co-owners of the company. My title technically is Chief Digital Operations Advisor, and nobody knows what that means. <laughs> and that's totally fine because titles mean nothing. Um, digital operations, though, is what I do. and I call it digital operations and we define it that way because digital is not just what gets lumped into digital marketing. Your website, yes, plays a role in marketing for sure, but your website also cares for sales and the conversion process. It could be an e-commerce store. It could be, you know, the validation tool before somebody says, yes, I will now sign your contract. Um, and digital and your website could be used to create customer advocates. It's where your, your clients log in. It's, you know, where they read their blogs or they, you know, read success stories. And it really plays a role in how your entire company functions. Digital is kind of the foundation of most companies anymore who use a username and a password and Wi-Fi to connect to the things that help you run your business. And that's digital operations. So, um, I am a mom of two and recently a fiance. So that was very exciting. That happened like a week and a half ago. So I'm still living that up a little bit. Um, and super nerd. So I love all things data and numbers. I like to do things that impact businesses and their profitable bottom line numbers. So I'm not a big fan of doing things just because it's what's trendy. I'm a fan of doing things that create revenue and profitable revenue at that. So um, that's a little bit about me. On some of these slides, I have like my email address and the website in the bottom and you can, you know, contact me anytime. Normally I'd say just stop me at ThriveCo, but I'm not there right now and not, haven't been there recently, but I'm always available digitally. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so I see that there's something in the chat. Katie, is there a question? It was an aw congrats from Katie, oh. the other Katie. Oh, thank you, <laughs> Katie. <laughs> awesome. All right, so this is why we're talking about customer, uh, customer advocacy, customer success, customer experience about where your customers are, where the money is. Because satisfying and retaining your current customers is anywhere from three to 10 times less costly than acquiring brand new customers. It costs less to keep the ones you have and keep them coming back than it does to find brand new people. And that most of us would agree to that. Like that logically kind of makes sense in our brain. Yeah, it's easier to keep people than it is to find somebody brand new to the process. And, but I really want you to think about it. So I put these two lists together on the screen that you'll see one in new customer costs and then about retaining your customer costs. So when we think about it, these are all the things that you might be doing and who knows how many more tactics and strategies you've implemented to try to find new customers. So you've got your website and you're creating brand new content all the time, which, you know, might go along with SEO and we're blogging and we're writing tons of you know, new landing pages um, and creating eBooks and white papers and checklists and all this content marketing work just to find somebody new to talk to. You know, you're running email campaigns, whether it's like a newsletter or an actual sales message that you're sending out and announcing a new service. You might be running direct mail campaigns. 
um, or running Facebook ads, or you're going to events, maybe not right now, or going to virtual ones. <laughs> um, you are on aggregator websites, which are like those directory ones or the, what is the name of the company? And I can't think of it off the top of my head where you submit it and they submit to you for you, all the directory sites, you know, that they'll put you on Google, my business and Yelp and Angie's list and all these other, you know, kind of aggregator directory websites for you or price comparison shopping. When you think about like G2 or Captera, where you can go and get reviews of businesses, um, and get comparisons of their prices. Um, that's a lot of work that you put into and a lot of money that's invested in just finding new people into your company. On the other side, when we're talking about retaining customers, what are the costs associated that you have with keeping somebody? You know, you might, you might have some costs in your website still, right? Because there might be going to you to submit, you know, a maintenance request. Let's say we're working with a property management company and their website's used by their current tenants and by the owners that they represent. They, were there, they go to log in and they go to submit requests or apply for new things within their current contract. Um, you might run customer email campaigns or automation things to say happy birthday or things like, you know, your contract's coming to an end or X, Y, Z. There's so many things to say to our current customers. You might be running social media a little bit for them. You have the personal touch of phone calls or we see them in person, you know, um, and then just the cost of delivering the service that you provide whatever it is. So the list for one is much smaller. So visually we know that that's a little less things involved um, in retaining a customer, right? Versus finding somebody brand new who just might want to talk to you. Okay. So that's why we think about those costs being three to tens, three to 10 times more expensive and with new customers versus retaining some customers. So the oh i can't spell the word selling apparently so i'm going to fix that the probability of selling to an existing customer the likelihood that you'll close that sale on average is 60 to 70 percent that's a fabulous close rate but the probability of selling to a new prospect is much lower than that you have a five to twenty percent on average close close rate for most businesses and when they tell you i have a 20 percent close rate on new customers you're like that's amazing so one in five of the inquiries i get i can close it so think about your own close rate right so with people who've never heard of you before and you're having your first conversations how many introductory conversations do you have and then how many of those move forward to the next stage and the next you kind of get through your process even if you don't have it detailed out you know what your process is you know what it kind of takes to sell somebody into your services and usually on average that the probability that you will actually close that new prospect is five to twenty percent but when we talk about selling to an existing customer this is somebody who already knows us they already you know know our work and if we've been doing a great job you know the trust is already there. The relationship is already there that they have this kind of history with you and their own experience to know that I'm going to get what I paid for. I want to buy more from them. I want to keep working with them. They, I feel like they're invested in my success. Those really intangible relationship qualities, those soft pieces are done for you. And there's trust built there so that you're, the closing rate is so much higher. Okay. So there are kind of three areas when we're looking at how businesses grow and all those different stages of a customer journey. You got awareness, and then they move to inquiry, like, yes, tell me more. Then they convert into a sale. Then we satisfy them. We deliver on the things we said. Uh, and then the kind of the last three stages of a customer journey are what I'm really going to focus on for us today. And those three things are retention, retaining our existing customers, expansion, so getting more from them, um, and then advocacy. I'm going to touch on all three of those today. And that's really where the, th the money from your existing customers lives in one of those three categories, ideally all of them. So I'm going to break them down a little bit more. So retention is quite simply, we're keeping our clients. We're, it's not a flash in the pan. We sold them one service. They bought one thing from us. We delivered on that and now they're done. 
we want retention. We want them to subscribe, let's say, and they're going to keep coming back for the same thing. Or we want them to, if it's not a subscription product or something that you're selling, we want them to always come back to you when they need that particular product or service. If it is just a one-time thing, you only buy it once in a while. We want you to be the top of the line. Like we're going to keep them coming back. I've created this kind of loyalty base. Um, and I meet their expectations every time. That's why they keep coming back. Um, and you deliver on the promises that were made. So what I mean by deliver on the promises is when you are searching and when you do are out, you know, acquiring brand new customers, you're making promises in your marketing. So, cause you're telling them what kind of results they might be expecting, what services you provide. You're promising that these are the things that you do, that they can expect, that what it's going to be like. And then the same thing happens in the sales process. Now we're getting down to the, you know, the contract and how much it costs to get those things from you. But you're promising, you know, with a contract, usually, you know, legally or, you know, exchange on the website or however they're purchasing from you, that you pay me this amount, I will deliver these things. I've made that promise to you. Um, so we retain them by doing exactly what we said we were going to do. And example, and why we focus on delivering on your promises as a kind of pillar of retention with your customers is we've all been there where we get the, you know, the Facebook ad in the feed or you see something on Etsy or you see something, you purchase it. And then what comes in the mail? Have you seen these like these horror stories of girls who bought their dresses on Amazon or from a Facebook ad and what they got in the mail is not what was in the picture right? It looks nothing like what I was promised I was going to get. Um, or I didn't read the fine, you know, the fine print that said, you know, not actual size, or it's not quite like this. It's kind of deceptive in that way. Um, so we want to deliver on what we said we were going to do so we can keep them. Um, and then I always make this point of knowing your client timelines. So what I mean by that is you're keeping if it's a service, especially, so if you have a subscription to something, you know that you're going to deliver something to them every single month on the first, let's say, or every 90 days you're getting back together um, for a meeting, or you're going to publish a blog post a month, whatever the services that you provide, you know the cadence, you know the schedule, they never have to hunt you down to get what they ask for. So it's part of that delivering on the promises um, and knowing what those timelines are. What do they need from you? On what cadence? How often do those things happen? How often should you be checking in as the kind of baseline service? Okay. Does that all make sense inside a, you know, retention, right? Okay. So then we get to expansion. So expansion is where we're taking those people that we've retained and the customers that are buying from us and cross-selling them our related service. So to improve their experience. Well, if you also, if you buy a shirt, you might need pants, right? So what are the things that are related to each other? If you buy a dress, you might need shoes, right? Um, if you are going to buy blog posts from a marketing company, you might also want them to create images to go with it. If, you know, if I'm working with you know, uh, an insurance agent and everything, and I'm going to insure my business, you might also need insurance, life insurance for your family and everything. Those are related services together that if I have you for one thing and everything, and I know what other things kind of fit in that realm of that family. And if you're a person, right, that has this one service, what other things make sense for you? So that's where we're going to cross sell related services that improve their experience. So if it's, you know, taking the insurance thing, if I have, you know, my business insurance through you, and then I can also get my life insurance through you or, you know, any other services that are related around that, I can have it all under one vendor and everything. It's one thing to keep track of, right? So we're looking for how do you make their lives easier? And everything and what makes your life easier, right? Because there's more revenue means we're increasing the lifetime value of that customer because they're in multiple, you know, maybe service categories for you or product categories. Um, so when does it make sense to add on things? When does it make sense to upsell to the next package? You have this basic package with me where you get, let's say if you're a coach and you get, you're in my group coaching sessions every month. What's the next step of that? 
Is it to now do two group coaching sessions a month? Or is it now do a group coaching and one one one-on-one experience per month? What's the upsell of the next tier of the package that makes sense for them based on where they're at and their needs? So, and then the other one I always add in here too is the downsell because this can be really, really valuable to your customer. When I tell you that, you know what, you are doing it gangbusters and you don't need this anymore, right? When can I save you money? Because now I've become like, I'm in your corner. I'm telling you like, you don't need this. Stop paying for it and reinvest that money in this next thing, whether I provide it or not, right? Or if it goes to a partner that I have that you've kind of graduated from using me, you know, you're ready for the next stage. You're ready, you know, Atomic Revenue, we have this policy in-house for us. Every 90 days when we do our quarterly reviews, we look at, you know, what's working, what's not, how's the budget, how's the ROI, and could we do this more profitably for you if you hired this service in-house now? Do you have enough work to hire a full-time employee to take this on? Because that's more valuable to the customer and everything to do it that way. So then they turn into that expansion of services where I've told you, you don't belong here for us anymore. You've graduated from using, you now become a success story for me, right? So now I can use you to sell other, to other people. Um, I can tell you, I've gotten more referrals from customers that I, you know, essentially not fired, but, you know, let go of and told them they graduated. I've, you know, I've gotten more referrals from those customers than anybody else because they're like, they're not just going to milk you for every dime that you have and stay with them forever. They're going to give you exactly what you need for as much as you need until you don't anymore. Um, we that's we have a case study on our site right now that talks about this the uh, urgent care system in st louis our urgent care was a client for a number of years and we did all of it like we helped them with healthcare hospitality and remodeling all of their entryways and reputation it was a crazy scope of work like beyond what even we were like really realizing that they needed and then we helped them hire a director of marketing to come in and take on the bulk of it and we just gave them a couple hours you know, and just kind of a listening ear of, you know, just kind of validate her decisions and then helped her hire an assistant. And then we backed away from it because they don't need you anymore. So that's not profitable for us. We can't have our hands in 80 companies because that's just time and you can't scale that way. Right. And that those companies, we want them to stand on their own. You shouldn't have to outsource all the things, you know, to be a really scalable, profitable company who wants to be maybe be acquired someday. You're not going to get the company acquired if all the work is being done out of the house, right? So downselling is really helpful and really profitable um, because of the referrals and advocates that you create in that way. Um, Oops, let me go back. Jumping. Here we go. All the way around. All right. So then the third step is the advocates. So creating customer advocates. These are the raving fans. You might call them your tribe. These are my people, right? These are, you know, uh, these are the people that just talk about you all the time, who always have a nice thing to say, are always happy to talk you up. When they see an opportunity, they mention you, they tag you on social media. They're sending email introductions of going, you know, I just really think you guys should know each other those are fabulous customer advocates. And we want more and more of those, right? So we create this through a step. You have to set clear expectations, right? And those delivering on the promises. So clear expectations of what's going to happen when they work with you. And that creates this customer experience of, it was just easy. I knew what was going to happen. I knew the process. I loved working with them. That experience I had with your company was, this was fantastic. And that means that the delivery of those products can exceed the customer's just satisfaction level. I'm a big fan of never using customer satisfaction as a KPI because if a customer is satisfied, they tell nobody. How was the work? Fine. Like they did what I asked them to do. Like that is not a raving fan. That is, if you are happy with somebody's service, but they didn't, surprise you or the results weren't fantastic but you got what you asked for i'm yeah it was fine 
it's great. But when you, and, but think about the opposite. If you destroyed it for somebody or you just really dropped the ball on a particular customer experience, they're going to tell everybody. <laughs> I'm going to review you on Yelp, on Google My Business. I'm going to post on Facebook. I'm going to tell my friends, don't use them. The loudest people are the ones who are dissatisfied. So you have to go on the opposite end. We want a customer advocate and they will be louder for you when presented an opportunity to talk about you. But then again, unlike the one that a uh, customer who's really upset, they're not just going to post for no reason that how much they love you. Like, unfortunately, we wish that was the case, right? I would love to be tagged all the time on stuff that was like, I just wanted to say, I just love this company that I outsource my work to. Or, you know, do we just write or, you know, a post talking about how great ThriveCo is, even though we love it there? We don't just do that without being prompted by something, without see, having an experience there, by going to an event or I was at the office and Katie stopped by, right? And just talked to me for a few minutes and I just have a smile on my face. And I might post about that, but I don't just think about it because like all of you, we're in the day-to-day -day of our work and kids and fiancés and dogs and all the other things. And are my kids actually going to get to go to school full-time or not, right? <laughs> like, I don't actually know. Um, we don't think about even the people that we love and the companies that we love dearly without a prompt and you know, the ask. So, so when we set clear expectations and we create customer experience so that the delivery then exceeds customer satisfaction, because customer satisfaction is not a measurement we care about, we have to exceed it, then we result in qualified leads from customer success. This is when your advocates, those people that love you, send you leads, right? And those people have already been essentially pre-qualified. It cuts down on the time it takes to sell to them because there's been this transfer of trust. They already know who you are because somebody else did the pre-sell for you. Um, and when they've been asking about it, a lot of times then they've been pre-qualified because they're probably talking to like-minded people. You sh most of us have kind of the same, we'll say customer advocate avatar, prospect, the ideal candidate we want to work with. So when we find one of them, they probably have friends who are also the same kinds of people because we're attracted to the people that are just like us, right? <laughs> so let them be your sales team. And that's why we like customer advocates because now you have an unpaid sales team that's just constantly sending you people. And we like that. And Sometimes you can set up a loyalty program, right? Or you set up a referral program where they get, you know, something off with you. Like if you, you know, send us a referral and, you know, we have um, relationships with some of our partners where we have affiliate partners, we'll, we'll send them a, a commission essentially. And if they, you know, close a deal and we have other people who are just advocates and they're like, I don't care about that. I just want to send people your way because you guys do good work and it makes me look good, right? Because I sent them to somebody who's going to take care of them. So you don't have to have this referral structure or commissions or prizes all the time, but it definitely helps, right? If you can find a way to say, you know, refer somebody in and I'll give you a month free, those kind of things always work well. Um, but those qualified leads that come from our advocates are really valuable because they've already been talking you up. So now they're ready to hear what you have to say and they're really open-minded. I really like this. Um, and I, if anybody wants the sources for any of these studies, I'm happy to send them to you. Just shoot me an email. I'll let you know what they are. 86% um, of buyers will pay more for a great customer experience. The more expensive the item, the more they're willing to pay for that great customer experience, right? Um, and just because I'm in fiance mode and I've been watching Say Yes to the Dress, um, like I can buy a dress at David's Bridal for $200. I could. But I watch Say Yes to the Dress and those prices start at $2,000, right? But you'd pay for the experience of going to Kleinfeld's right? I'm willing to pay for it because I just want the Kleinfeld's bridal experience. And it's the same thing. So I'm willing to pay a little bit more because I want to work with you. So this is why the personal branding, and I'm sure we've done other, you know, access series and, you know, workshops through ThriveCo, and we've seen this around a lot. Your personal brand matters. You know, you think just as much as your company brand. I want to work with Maddie. You know, you think, like, right? Edward Jones is vast right? There's a lot of options. There's a lot of quote unquote Maddies all around. 
but there is no Maddie near anything. I want to work with her. So I'm willing to pay more, go out of my way to do whatever it takes to work with her on what I need. So we're creating those great customer experiences because I keep hearing about how great it is to work with her, right? So I'm going to seek that out and hunt you out and say, yes, this is the person I want to work with. So 86% of buyers will pay more for that fabulous customer experience. Steph, um, we have yes. a comment from Katie Rice. Um, yes. She said, uh, WashU had some recent research that it's most successful to give the referral reward to the new clients that the refer feels generous. Fantastic. That is a great study. And I would love for you to send that to me, please. I would love to see that. Um, uh, because that's true. A lot of them are, I'll give you, give the refer $20 and, you know, Freshly does this, right? I'll give you $20 and we'll give your friends $40 you know, if you uh, refer it out. So can, should you give gifts both ways? Should you just do it to one side or the other? It sounds like WashU had a great study that giving them to the new prospect, the new client, the referred in person um, is the way to go. So I'm looking forward to seeing that because love super nerdy data. Uh, so <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, Katie. So how, what do you have to do to create this customer experience so that they'll pay more, they stay with you, you know, they create advocates. These are the things that are most important for a positive customer experience. 80% of consumers say that speed, convenience, knowledgeable help, and friendly service are the most important elements of a positive customer experience. I want it fast. I want it to be easy right? I want you to know what you're talking about. <laughs> I want you to be able to help me. I want you to do it with a smile. <laughs> I want to know that it's just really fun to work with you. So I've had people who, you know, even personally will say, I just wanted to work with you because you sound like you just love the stuff that you're doing. You know, I could probably find somebody cheaper on freelancer or, you know, anybody else I could put out an ad on Craigslist and find somebody to help me with this. But I just, I just want to do it with you right? I just enjoy our chats. Um, and so the same thing is for you. When you're doing something you really love, your customers feel that, and then they want to send more people to experience that. Feel what I felt, you know, experience what I went through and everything. I want people to share in that. Um, and those are those kind of positive customer experience attributes that right now consumers are saying that those are the most important things. Um, and I would say, I would put a caveat and say that I would think that speed and convenience are going to be the two big ones right now, right? In today's world, it's got to be really easy to get what I want, right? And it has to be a, an immediate because I just found out, you know, my kids are supposed to go to school five days a week um, and now we're all going virtual and this change has happened and I have to find an answer because I am overwhelmed and frazzled. It just has to be on some level easy to experience and buy from you. Don't make it too complicated. Okay. So less time, less cost with existing customers. So we've touched on this a little bit, but I wanted to kind of break it down a little bit for, further. So when you spend less to retain the customers that you have, and then you kind of expand with your existing customers, the leads they send you and everything through advocacy do the same thing. It costs, spend less time and there's less cost to convert them into a new deal. So that's why the money's in your existing customers because you can upsell, cross sell your current ones and get more money directly from them, but also from the referrals that they send to you. And we didn't have to do this through a Google search or paid ads or any of those things that are kind of starting to drain our money. We are getting it from our customers who are doing a direct referral into your business and they're already past that you know getting little little bit past that getting to know you phase we're kind of further along in our process right so what we're looking at is we're decreasing when we get into the the nerd of it and the the kpis of it all where the sales cycle is the shortened time period and we're decreasing your customer acquisition costs so so the cac um so congrats now you have customer advocates and that unpaid sales force that we we're talking about working for you that is just pure profit at that point so the profitability of new customers and the profitability of referral customers are vastly different 
So when I have a new customer, I've already spent all these things in labor and all the work I had to do to get there and to get them to the table. And then the, you know, the closing rate is so much smaller that the cost of that one is so high and I have to keep them to increase profits. But when I've got my advocate and somebody that has, didn't have to go through all of the stages and I didn't, you know, I didn't have to spend money on an ad campaign or a sponsorship or something to get them here to my front door, you know, begging to work with me because of an experience they heard about from their friend, that cost to acquire them is less. So that means my profitability on that client is also higher. Okay. Let me bump this down. So how do your, how can your current customers help you right now? With all the things going on, what are the things that you can work with them right now to help you increase referrals, to do the upsell, cross-sell? You can also use them for, ask them for reviews. You don't, and just like we were talking about earlier, if you don't ask for it, there's not a prompt, you're not going to get it. People don't just review things out of the goodness of their hearts or because they were bored today. Um, that doesn't happen, unfortunately. So we're going to ask for reviews or ask for a testimonial. So um, when I, why I say these differently? Reviews are when I say, will you go to Facebook and leave me a review? Will you go to my LinkedIn profile and write me a recommendation? Will you go to Google My Business and write me a review? Testimonials is more about, you know, the people who are like, I don't have that kind of time. Like, just you were great to work with, right? Or if they say something nice in an email exchange, be like, can I pull that out and make that a testimonial on my website? I just love how you said that, right? They may have said something that could be a testimonial and you never even asked for it. It was just them one-to-one -one exchange. Like, can I make that public? Can that now be used on your website or in social posts? Case studies uh, or success stories. People use those interchangeably, um, but a case study is usually a lot more in-depth right? This is more where we're telling um, the how and the process and what it was like before, what it's like now, what's the ROI, you know, what were the outcomes? There was a little bit more. Success stories might be those quicker, shorter messages um, where it was, um, you know, we increased inbound leads by 60%, you know, uh, within the first six months or whatever it was. Those are the shorter stories um, that come out of that. Case studies are usually a little bit more in-depth. Some people use them interchangeably and that's totally fine. They could mean the same exact thing to you. It really doesn't matter. Um, guest blogs. Your current customers, you can invite them to be featured on your blog and say, you know what, I'm always looking for content. You know, if you'd like to write something that was about, you know, that relates to, you know, my audience, but from your perspective, you know, I'm happy to feature it on my blog. And you can give you a link back to your website. So those are easy hits of, you know, one fresh content for you, which is helpful across the board. Um, it's also helpful for them too, because backlinks are a big thing, right? When it comes to SEO, if those are things they care about, getting featured on third-party websites for validation, those are super. Social media mentions, tagging people. Um, Thriveco, Katie does a great job of this. Anytime she publishes my review that I left for them, she tags me in it. So I can go and like it and comment on it and engage on it, all right? Um, so uh, anytime you can mention one of your customers, they are going to engage with you back, right? It increases your engagement rates. This is exactly why we do this. We tag somebody and say thank you. We, you know, share their wins because they just, you know, one of our clients is a, a printing company uh, in St. Louis. And they just bought this like massive, like million dollar piece of equipment so they could do more work, whatever it was. This is a huge deal for them. So we are going to share it and say, this is amazing. Wow. It's great to see how you're growing. It does nothing really for us in our audience other than it's a little promo for, Hey, do you need printing? You know, we know somebody who does that, but that is all about our relationship with the printing company. That is just, hey, we saw you shared that. That was so nice of you. It's, you know, it comes up in the next conversation. You know, they, it's just enhancing our relationship. So they'll stay, retain that customer longer, right? And then possibly upsell, cross-sell and be like, you know, have you thought about, you know, now that you have this new piece of equipment, you know, here are some ideas we have about how we could really leverage that. Um, you know, the, of course, the customer marketing, upsell, cross-sell, downsell, look at those customer lists who hasn't been touched in a while, right? Who's just kind of on autopilot that could use another touch from you. Um, press releases are another thing. Can you 
um, write a press release where you talk about the work that you did for somebody. This doesn't work in every industry. Um, but if you were instrumental in helping them open up a new office, let's say, um, or anything like that where you partnered and because of your work together, you know, something has happened or there you're going to go in partnership together to launch a new program. You're going to joint venture something together. Um, what, so that leads kind of into webinars. Can you, with your current customers, use them as a feature on a webinar for new customers and say, I'm going to invite, you know, Nancy to come on because she's been a customer for such a long time. You know, I want her to share some of her experience and her expertise and how it's been working with us and contribute to this topic that relates to us both, that we can attract customers from both sides and share each other's communities. You know, we talked a little bit, loyalty programs is always an option. Um, swag items. So this is just drop in laptop stickers, really popular near anything. People love sticking stickers on something, whether it is actually their laptop or it's a mug or on a folder and people are inclined to take a picture of it and post it to social media and tag you in it. And you know, like when you use like sticker mule or any of those other websites, it costs nothing for like a thousand stickers. So, and those are really easy. So stickers, we use pop sockets and everything. Like all of our team members, because we didn't have pop sockets, now we all have them on our phone. Um, so I have atomic revenue everywhere I go. Um, we did, um, the Atom is our logo. So we did necklaces. So I don't have mine on today, but all the girls got Atom necklaces and earrings and bracelets and the boys got some cufflinks and, you know, we just little swag items that were just because. You know, we sent out mugs and ThriveCo did the same thing. They gave us these little wine coolers, you know, and whenever I'm going to drink out of that, Neri, um, I'm going to take a picture and it's an easy tag. It's an easy social media post. Um, so think about fun, you know, swag items that you could send somebody that are low cost for you because you can order in bulk and you can just drop it off. We just started working with a company who, when they finish a project with their customers, they send them a gooey butter cake because they're a St. Louis company. And then as soon as the project is done and delivered, they send their whole team a gooey butter cake to anywhere they are in the United States near anything because it's quintessentially St. Louis. So what, it doesn't have to be, it's not related to the work they did at all, but it's related to where they're from. And so those com companies take a picture and they send it back and they post it. And like, we're enjoying, you know, gooey butter cake from this company today. And it's a fun, you know, culture post for them on social media. And then the actual client gets a post, a tag. So swag items or gifts. Yes. Uh, so Steph, we have a comment from Nancy that says, I saw someone recently do Zoom calls with past clients to record video testimonials. It was easy and yes. impactful. Yes, that's fantastic. I love this, um, especially because we can't be with each other in person. So getting on Zoom, recording a video together, or walking them through how to do it on their phone doesn't have to be this massive production to get video testimonials from people because we're all working from home. All of us, you know, are working from home. Only a few of us are actually in the offices anymore. So the likelihood that we're going to have a film crew standing by is probably slim to none. Um, but we can record things on Zoom together. We can show them how to record it on a video. And it can be quick clips that then get, you know, pulled together and put into a bigger testimonial video that you feature on your website to showcase all the different kinds of people you work with right? Or they're strategically placed of, you know, your customer's raving review about this one service that you provide. So I'm, you know, a coach, a teacher, a trainer, a speaker, whatever it is. And here's a testimonial that's just about that from a customer. And here's one that's just about this line of service. Zoom is a great way to do that. Great, great suggestion, Nancy. And then finally on my list is just to surprise them. So this can be quite literally anything. So this is where you have to use your imagination. Um, so I'm trying to think through some of the ones I've had before. Um, I had uh, some of my, my mastermind team members, I'm in Vistage, and right after I got engaged, I got text messages from them. Because one of my team members who I'm actually friends with on Facebook saw it and texted the whole team. And then I got this slew of text messages from people that I hadn't even told yet who knew about it. And it was so sweet. And it was you know, just this note of like, we were thinking about you. And I was like, Oh my God. 
And it gave me an opportunity to one-to-one -one communicate with each of them in a way I hadn't done in a long time. So that was a definite like surprise and, and nice opportunity that actually worked for all of them in their favor because we started talking about deals and, and prospects together, right? Because it always turns to work. Uh, <laughs> um, or surprising them by when we're allowed to again, you know, stopping by if it's a retail store, right? And stopping by and saying, yeah, I'm looking for a gift for somebody or I just want to see how you are. I was in the neighborhood. Um, the quick email that's not an email campaign, but saying, hey, I signed up to attend this webinar and it made me think about this, you know, conversation we had. So I wanted to send it to you in case you hadn't seen it. It's just a surprise. I was thinking about you. Or it could be sending a gooey butter cake, right? Or it can be, you know, the anniversary note or the, you know, anniversary of the, how long you guys have been working together. Um, we have a client who recently celebrated his 40th wedding anniversary. So we made a point of, you know, getting together a little gift. They've been a client for five years, getting a, a gift for him and his wife and sending it over. And it was just not something we'd normally do, but it was the extra touch, you know, that we felt was important just for that one. Um, so this is where your creativity comes out and everything and, and surprise your current customers so that they want to stay with you. Like this, the experience I get nowhere else, right? They want to, you've know, started up, you know, potential open door to another conversation if it's time to talk about the cross sell, the upsell, right? Um, or now you've gotten top of mind again. We love top of mind because then, oh, I just got something from, from Kay. That's right. I need to introduce her to, you know, this person that I know. So we love those. And those are more impactful. Those one-to-one -one surprises, one-to-one -one communications. As much as we love automation and broadcast and, you know, being able to push the button and everybody knows, nothing is going to replace one-to-one -one communication. It's not going to go away. And it's still going to be the most impactful because that's where we really form our deepest relationships with people and connections. So we like quick fixes. We like, you know, the big things that you can do, you know, you know small cost, big impact. But, you know, don't also just discount the phone call or a text message. Okay. So I really like this. Um, so awareness is good, but advocacy will take your business to the next level. So it's, it's a good thing to be seen. It's a whole nother thing to have people beating down your door, right? Because I want this experience. I want what you have. I want that to be part of my life. I want what you provide to be, you know, just an integral part of all the things that I do. So I created this quick punch list here. This is what can you do right now? So I'm big on action items. So it's great to listen in on access series and, and all these different speakers and stuff, but I want you to take something and go do it now so that we're implementing things. So you can review your current customer list, see who needs another touch. Who's it been a while that we haven't talked to in a while that probably could just use a check-in? That's something you could do right this second, right? Or not right this second, like right after we're done, okay? Um, review your past customer list. People who aren't buying from you right now, anything, and what are the opportunities? Has it been a while and maybe things have changed for them or maybe they've changed roles? This is something I'm a big fan of on LinkedIn because I can see when people start a new position and seeing where did you go next? And we go, hmm, you know, we could do those things we did for you over here at this new one. That works real well. So I'm a big fan of that. So that's an ongoing, but go back and look and see who were some of the people you really loved working with. They were the ideal, but for whatever reason, they stopped working with you because things moved on, things changed. You know, is it time to check in? Uh, ask your loudest advocates and happiest customers for those reviews or testimonials or if they'd like to be featured on your website or social media. So make your quick list of these are the people that I don't even have to ask and they talk about me. And I know that they would post something or share something if I asked. So uh, we're going to make that quick list of people that just anything was happening. I could probably text them in the middle of the night and they would respond. Right. Um, Look at your most profitable services or your products and what's the best upsell cross sell that goes with that service. So uh, just not looking at the customers, but looking at what you sell, what are the things that work really well packaged together or are the series and next steps. So we've got the 
beginner course, and then there's an intermediate course and an advanced course. Those kind of lend itself to, you know, going up from there. But if you have a lot of different things that don't necessarily fit together, can you find relationships and that kind of timeline or trajectory of if they start here, this is where I want them to go. What happens next? So create that kind of process for yourself. And then finally, another thing that you could do is right now is incorporate your clients into your social media posts for tags and mentions. So sharing their posts, tag them in something, you know, share an old photo, um, share one of their articles or tag them in something and say, hey, I thought about you. Um, you were on my mind today and whatever. So these are, you know, five things that you if it's examples, you could take away tons of other stuff from what we talked about today. But these are five examples of things you could run with. Um, if you wanted something actionable, which I'm a big fan of, taking action right away, which is Tara, by the way. So if you know Tara Kinney, who's our CEO, T-A-R-A, -A, taking action right away is the acronym we've created for Tara. And we've all kind of embraced it. <laughs> um, so those are all of our take action items. So customer service is not a department it is a philosophy to be embraced by every employee so this is something that you get money out of your existing customers when customer service and just you just exude taking care of them when that's embraced by everybody from you know whether you're a one woman show or you are you've got a sales department you've got a website developer you've got an operations team when they're all thinking about customer first then that just kind of exudes out and all of these things come naturally and it's not as a focused effort where I have to really think about this today and I'm going to do one thing every day that's going to help me retain my customers right it just comes from naturally operating when it is just part of your philosophy so that is what I have for you today um, I'd love to open up if there's any more questions. Um, thank you for the questions along the way and for you know Nancy and Katie for sharing some of those studies and ideas that was awesome um, does anybody else have anything else that they want to talk about? If you are not on mute, unmute yourself so we can talk. Got it. Yay. Uh, Steph, thanks. Um, I really, you kind of went back to some of those points where you obviously love what you do and you know, I love what I do. Kate, I mean, all these, all of us here, I think that is, the biggest thing for making a successful business and then you can do all these little fine things that yes. help you get there but um when you like what you do then your customers have a better a better experience absolutely yeah. so i think i imagine because thrive co is a place for you know entrepreneurs and business owners and you know we've already it attracts a community of people that are doing what they want to be doing so yeah. i think i could probably everybody here is doing exactly what they love and they've created a life that they wanted to have. Mm -hmm. um, so shouldn't be a problem to let that just bring some joy <laughs> into the things that you do that just kind of spills out everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. It was really good. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording though. Um, that way I can send it out as soon as it, uh, it sh uh, shares here.